Hello, biology students. It's been a long time since I've, since I've seen you. I really hope you're doing well. I hope this remote learning is going um, well for you. And if not, um, then please reach out, reach out to your teachers. We want to help you. We're all learning in this together, so let us know um, if you're struggling. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to check in a little bit with you today and to give you some clarification on how to make pedigrees so that we can um, make sure that your, your family ones are going well and so that ultimately we can learn to analyze them. So if you ever need to pause this video to, uh, you know, practice something or uh, go back and re-listen to it, the nice thing is, is you can, um, and you can't necessarily do that in class. Um, but I do want you to still ask me questions if you have them. Obviously, you can't do that now, but uh, you can always reach out to me and I'd be happy to help. So let's start off with, with what pedigrees are and a little bit of background. Hopefully, you've watched those two ed puzzles on Classroom. Um, they will be really good for going over this, but I'll just give you a quick review. A pedigree, I will remind you, is a family tree where we track a trait. But so to begin with, so we can see how pedigrees work and how they are put together, let's talk about my family. I'm going to only give a really small amount of it, and it may be hard to read, but um, you know I'm writing this on my screen here. We'll do the best we can. Um, so let's start off with my with my uh, my parents. So my dad's name is Lee. And my mom's name is Sandy. Okay, so Lee and Sandy married. To show that they were married, we put a line between the two. Now, I do want to clarify that that line doesn't mean that they had to be married. It's called a marriage line, and my parents happened to have been married when they had me, but that line doesn't necessarily show actual uh, legal marriage. It just shows that they reproduced. Now, we have a line down to show that they had a child. Um, at first, it was just my sister, Amy. Um, and it would look like this. Now, if we want to show two kids, then what we have to do is we actually have to erase my sister's name, and we actually have to put a sibling line. So we, the sibling, sibling line um, is actually a timeline where over here, is the first thing that happened, and over here is the last thing that happened. And so if we think about it that way, the very first thing that happened was my sister, as Amy, was born, and then I was born, Mr. J. All right, <laughs> so that's supposed to say Amy and Mr. J. Um, okay, so from there, we can tell just by looking at the sibling line, right, in this area right here, we can tell what happened. We can tell the order of events. Amy happened first, and then I was born. Um, and so what we can do then is we can add more to our family tree here. So right now I'm just making a family tree, showing you how we put these, these connections together. Um, my sister then, uh, and actually you'll notice that I'm keeping the generations on the same line. So like Lee and Sandy, they were in the same generation. They happen to have kids. Amy and Mr. J, and we're on the same generational line too. So if how would we show my mom's um, brothers and sisters? Well, we would have to take a line going up from, whoops. <laughs> We'd have to take a line going, going up from Sandy. Ah. <laughs> uh -huh. It's almost like we're back in the classroom and I'm, and I'm making simple mistakes again. All right, we'd have to have a line going up from Sandy over to show however many siblings she had. And as it turns out, she had several. So the very first one, um, so my mom is the oldest, so I put her at the left of the line of the sibling line up at the top. This top line is that, that's the sibling line right there. Then Sharon was born, followed by John and Sue. And so we can see the sibling line that way. Um, and notice how we keep eh, all of these people on the same generational line. From there, um, let's move back down to the line where my sister and I are at. So if we want to add my sister's husband, Kyle, we put him right there. 
and they have three kids, three very active kids that they're pretty busy with uh, during this whole um, uh, uh, thing that's going on here. Well, so they had three kids. So we put the, them across. The very first born was Teak, then Trig. That's hard for me to write with this. And Tain. Teak, Trig, and Tain. Boy, that's kind of hard to see. That's okay. What I'm getting at here is that we can see a, a, a basic generational line um, idea showing up. If I move these over just a little bit, like I maybe should have at the beginning, um, what we can do is we can actually put um, my dad's side on there also. So if I draw my line up and over, my dad had one sister named Paula. And this is a, um, you know, I don't know too much about Paula. I remember I met her once, but um, uh, beyond that, we haven't had too much contact with her. And I believe that she was married to um, someone at some point, or at least had kids with somebody, because she has, um, uh, I'm going to put a question mark, I'm not sure who that is. She has two two kids. I believe one is a boy and one is a girl. And, I, and again, I just haven't talked to them in a long time. So I will say boy, just for now, and girl. Now, here is where we kind of get to the next step. As it turns out, it doesn't really matter if I know that, whether they're a boy or a girl or not, because what we can do is a boy, and I'll write this over here in red. A boy, the way we write a boy is a square. The way we write a girl, <laughs> oh boy, is a circle. Um, I, I, I'm... I'm not an elementary school kid, even though my writing kind of looks like I am. Um, okay, so a boy is a, is a square and a girl is a circle. And so if I come back here, what I can do is I can erase the boy and I can erase the girl. And I can put just a um, square and a circle. I can do the same thing for Paula. And actually over here, I don't know Paula's husband's name, so I can erase him. But I do know it's a, it's a boy, so I can go with a square. Uh, and I can erase Paula. <laughs> There's Polly being erased. And I can add her as a circle. So this is starting to look maybe more like the pedigrees, pedigrees you're familiar with. Erase Lee and Sandy. And I can put a square and a circle. And um, I'm not going to keep boring you with the details, but that's the basic idea, is that ultimately if we do that, then we get all of the same generation, the same line, right? These are all the same generation. This is generation two. Here is generation three. And I do know a lot more about my family. Um, and so I have made my own pedigree like you have, but I've just had a little advantage of having more time to do it. So here's Mr. Johnson's family pedigree. You can see how really big it is. Um, and you can see here on uh, the way we write it is we write numbers on the left-hand side, right? One is here. That's generation one, generation two, three, four, and five. Now, what we would ultimately do is we don't really necessarily care about names when it comes to pedigrees because names don't really matter when we're talking about generations. They do because, you know, we care about people in our lives, but they don't really ultimately when we're looking at, gen at gene, uh, genes and genetics. So if we were to actually look at a different version of this, oops, that's the wrong thing. Um, if we were to look at a different version of this, then instead of, instead of Elmer and Grace and May and Wilbur and all of this at the bottom, which these are fantastic names of my grandparents, brothers and sisters, which is interesting. But anyway, um, we would have numbers at the bottom. So instead of, for example, instead of talking about Elmer, we would say generate, we'd say generation two, person one, or just two, one. Grace would be generation two, person two. So two, two. Uh, what would I be then? Well, I would be four, three, because I'm the third person in from the last, left. Each generation, we restart numbering. Now, there's all sorts of interesting ways where we can kind of show other relationships between people. Um, and uh, But let's get into how we can analyze these. Oh, just a few other things. Yeah, I guess I will show you one more. Uh, a few things to note 
is how would we show multiple marriages? So I'll kind of draw a line so we know that, that we're not, I'm not talking about um, the pedigree above. So let's say, um, so here is my mom, here is my dad, and my dad got remarried to a lady named Tracy. And they, she had three, sorry, two kids from a previous marriage. I know my family, I swear. Um, so she has two kids from a previous marriage. Now I don't include her in my pedigree. If I, if I come back here, do you notice how in generation three that Lee is there, but there is no Tracy? Well, that's because they didn't have kids, so I don't include them, but I could. Uh, I could include her if I wanted to, if she felt bad. You can do that in your family pedigree if you want. So let's pretend like they did have kids. If they did have kids, here would be Tracy, and then we'd have to include any of their kids. Here would be my mom, my dad, and my, my sister, and I. And if my dad remarried and had a kid with Tracy, then we'd have to include whatever gender that is. Now let's say it's a female. And so what what would happen if if the if my dad remarried a third time? Well, I would have to just take and make a line over the top with another female and however many lines would be necessary. So that's kind of some of the ways you can show um, uh, multiple relationships, whatever you need to do. A few other kind of things to point out is, let's say we have a generational line, right? We have some unknown mom and dad, and they have um, maybe one girl, and then they have twins. Well, how do we show twins? We show, since this line up here is a timeline, and they were born at the same time, we have to put them off the same uh, point on that timeline. So if there were two girls, we would put you know, two circles. Now, these, the way that we're showing this is that we're showing this that they are twins, um, but they are not identical twins. So, you know, one could have been a boy, one could have been a girl. The way we show identical twins is that we actually draw a line here, kind of like a little A between the two, showing that not only are they twins because they came off the same point on the timeline, but this line shows that that DNA is the same. So that's how we show identical twins. All sorts of fun stuff. Uh, if someone's going to be born and we don't know how old or we don't know what gender they are, then that's when we might use a diamond like that. Um, and there's all sorts of other rules or exceptions to the rule that I'm probably forgetting right, right now.